Hey guys, welcome back to another video here on the channel. Today we're going to be taking a crack at white blue control. We didn't have enough bot cards to build an appropriate version, but let's figure and uh, take a crack with what we got. We I think we got pretty close. We're missing some key cards here and there. But let's see if what we have can take us to victory. And we'll play against Happy Frankie. Interesting name. Alrighty, so... Yeah, I think we keep this. We'll hopefully draw into the planes that we need for these guys. But we have two copies of Depart the Realms. And hopefully we draw along the way what we need. Alright, Layer of the Hydra. Is this mono green by any chance? Uh, green red? Something along those lines. Uh, I think he passes on it. And awesome. We drew into a, a planes. Alright, so we'll keep mana up next turn for the uh, Depart the Realms. In case we need it. And then on the following turn, we'll have enough mana for the elite spellbinder so we can at least take a look at his hand and see what he has all right so either he didn't draw land or he was debating on which of his various lands to drop on his turn all right so it's uh green blue interesting some simic shenanigans here all right so he just passed his turn here this is uh, perfect for us. Uh, you know what? L let's instead foretell this. And if he does play something on his turn, then we'll be able to do the Depart the Realms on our turn instead. Because I'm pretty sure I'm not going to uh, want to pay 5 for that Doom Scar. Alright, he played uh, a Sanctum. Target legendary creature becomes a god in addition to its other types, and he puts a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. But an indestructible account on target of God. That's pretty good. So we're going to do this. And we'll play the Spellbinder. And hopefully we'll get to look what is in his hand. Unless he has a counter spell. Alright. He has an Outrun's Epiphany. And several counter spells. Ray of Hope. This Epiphany. This can be foretold. This can be foretold. Uh, a creature you control every creature type in addition to the other types. We'll do it on this just because I rather mm, that be more than two. And again, I'm okay with this. Enters the battlefield, uh, tap it. As long as each other creature is red, lose all of it. Each creature within tap is controlled is the same type. So. I'm okay with that. I am a okay with that. And I'm a okay with that because we're just gonna put this back into his hand. And if he and if he has to cast the next turn, he he'll just cast the next turn. But at least that makes it so he casts that instead of something else. Or he casts that and maybe he foretells something, maybe he doesn't. I don't know. Alright, well, perfect. So we still have a Depart the Realms here. We're just going to do that and we're going to put this back in his hand. Making it so if he wants to do wants our creature to stay tapped, he's gonna have to do it again. So we drop this and we will attack for another three. And I really want to play this, but I don't want to play it unless he has a creature. And I don't think he's going to. Because he's like a version of white blue. But with the benefits of playing green, from what it looks like. So instead from here, we're just going to attack. And hopefully get some damage through. There we go, he goes down to 11. 
Ain't that great? And uh, there we go. He flashes us in. I don't have any more Depart the Realms in hand. So that is a thing. But we will memory the Luge here. And we will put two cards in our hand. We will put a saw it coming. And I behold the multiverse. Since I don't foresee too many creatures in his deck, I didn't really think of grabbing the Fading Hope. But we're going to foretell this thought coming, and then we're going to pass. Alrighty, so this the decisive denial, the mass will dis He foretold a card. Alrighty, might be the Aron's Epiphany. And uh, for us, we're going to drop this. And yeah, we'll cast uh, Behold the Multiverse. Still having mana open for negate in case we need it. And we're going to scry two and draw two. So I have a feeling we're going to need that second negate. I could be wrong here. We drew a Minimus Containment, which is pretty good. I'd rather not give him any more land, any more mana. I thought about doing the Minimus Containment on that Ray of Frost, but if he's having trouble getting that fourth, the fourth mana out, I don't want to help him with that. And alrighty, so we took that first win, and now we're up against Marco. Hopefully, we can carry on that the winning streak. And uh, we're going to Mulligan. I thought about keeping because of the fateful absence. But without getting any blue, this isn't going to really help us. And uh, alright, we got we got one blue. We got one blue. We'll probably put the minimus containment down. We'll keep everything else. Counter spells are always good. We hold the multiverse uh, card draw, so simply to consider. And uh, board wipes. Board wipes are board wipes. So we'll put the Minimus Containment back. We'll drop an island so we can have a mana open for a consider at the end of his turn. And all right, we got ourselves a planes. And I think he's gonna pass. All right, we're gonna consider here. And uh, we're just gonna draw that instead. Alright, so we're going to keep mana open in case we need to Fateful Absence or we need to negate. Thought about foretelling this, but I'd rather keep mana open in case of some shenanigans. Alright, so we're up against some white green. Looks like he's, he didn't have anything else. Alright, so we're going to drop a consider and uh, lands. We need lands. So, yeah, we're going to pass here, still keeping mana open. And there we go, we're up against uh, Angel Clerics, most likely. But we're just going to give him a clue instead. And, uh, yeah, we're going to foretell this Behold the Multiverse now. Since we're dealing with uh, clerics, we may not need the negate. Maybe we do. Yeah, there you go. Ranger class. All right. Well, could have fooled me then, I guess, right? <laughs> All right. All right. So now we're going to Brutal Cathar uh, taking the uh, wolf token with us. And we're just going to pass. I uh, Normally don't want to drop this down unless it's a creature out because it feels uh it feels wasteful. If we don't take something else alongside him. And there is a portable hole. Alright. Alright, so from here we're going to foretell this. Still having mana open for that behold the multiverse. 
Ardina again his turn. Maybe unless he drops another Ranger class or something else, and then we just cast and negate. Alright, so he's gonna level that up to level two. And then it's going to be our turn, I think. I think from here we're good, and uh, we're gonna we're going to attack for three. All right, perfect. Is he gonna get another creature down? Ooh, Sylvester Unicorn. Nice. All right, so we're going to behold the multiverse, hoping we get a counter spell. Scry goes to the bottom. And we didn't get a counter spell, but we did get a fading hope. So we'll be able to put this back into his hand at the end of his turn. And then, yeah, we're going to put this back into his hand. We really don't want him to gain any more counters. Or at least start distributing his counters onto her. And then at the end of the turn, we're going to flip back and we're going to take it. Alright, this was beautiful and we're just going to pass instead of casting this glimpse to cosmos because we want this back in night mode and uh, being able to cast at least one or two spells on uh, his turn will allow us to flip it back into day mode all right so yeah we're okay with these we're going to draw these And then it's going to get a counter. We were able to flip it back into the day mode. And uh, hopefully we can rinse and repeat. Or at least that's kind of the strategy I'm hoping for. Thought about casting the Spellbinder, but we're doing pretty good at doing this. And we have mana open for a Sod coming. Or mana open for a Memory Deluge. I mean, to be fair though, if, if he's able to take this out, yeah, he gets his creatures back, but we're hoping that that doesn't end up being the case. Which is why he's gonna pass. All right, so we're gonna memory deluge. And we're gonna put two cards in our hand. We're gonna put a Sonic coming. And we're going to put a plane because we have a lot of islands already. And there you go, we drew planes. Alright, so now we're gonna cast a uh, glimpse of cosmos. We're gonna put this fading hope in our hand. We're gonna foretell this a glimpse of cosmos. And uh, now that this is a 3 3, we're going to attack. And it's a 3 3 with first strike, which is pretty nice. Alright, so he has to pay three life if he wants to target it. So that is a thing. And we're gonna fade him hope and put this back into his hand. And that way he doesn't get any counters on this and this just enters the battlefield. And wow, we got a faithful absence. That's pretty good. That is uh pretty strong there. All right, looks like he had another one. So they're going to get counters each. We're going to go back into day mode. And we're going to take this with us. We're going to drop one of these. And we're going to uh, foretell this. And then one, two, three. One, two, and three will allow us to cast this, giving us glimpses into his hand. And uh, target creature you control deal damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker. Uh, you don't control, and I feel like we're gonna do it on that because on um, whatever creature he chooses to target, 
for for his creature, we are just going to uh, uh, fate, fateful absence it. And if he can he casts it, we still have a uh, mana open for Sonic Cummings as well. Alrighty, so we have the, the Valkyrie Harbinger and the uh, Devouring Tendrils. And he has access to whatever's on top of his library as well with the Ranger class. So if there's a creature in there, he's able to cast it. Alright, so we're going to uh, counter it with Saw It Coming. We definitely do not want him to be able to retrieve his creatures. He's going to animate his land and uh, he's going to attack. He's going to put a counter here. Uh, yeah, I say no blocks for now. We go to 12. Five, six, seven, four, five, six, six, okay. Uh, how about we just uh, attack for five? Putting him down to seven. Now that it's become nighttime, he has to uh, pay three life in order to do something here. We're gonna counter it with a start coming because we don't want him gaining any more life and putting any more counters on his guys. He's probably going to do it here, or not, and here you go, you can have a clue. So we have three, four, five, and then he sacrifices his clue to draw a card. And then from here we go, we go to the Paladin class, and we're able to cast a negate on that. We're holding on to those negates for a while, hoping he casts another class. Look at that, it's daytime again. Ain't that beautiful? And we're just gonna pass here. And hoping that this enables us to take the game somehow. All right, so we're gonna do this, hoping we get into something. We're going to choose the Fading Hope. And we're gonna choose the Saw it coming. And then we're going to put this back into his hand. And this should seal it for us. We will be turning sideways for six. And that's it. Alrighty, guys. That was our take on the white blue control. Like I said before. We were definitely missing some cards, but we were able to pull off some sweet wins there. So, if you guys want to see me play this again, let me know in the comments below. And as always guys, don't forget to tell your friends. See you next time.